Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for bringing us this far. We thank you, Lord, for every life, every soul that, Lord, you brought to our house tonight. And we thank you more especially for your presence with us here tonight. But Lord, again, we gather not unto any man, but unto you, our Lord and our God, that we might again present ourselves to you in your house, hear your word, and receive your Holy Spirit. We are the Lord, this revival who caused the blood of Jesus to purge or cleanse every single conscience that belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hand for Jesus. Say thank you, Holy Spirit. Say thank you, Father. Yes, indeed, we thank the Lord our God for bringing us this far. And uh, we are all very happy, very, very glad, uh, and rejoice in the fact that once again, he has gathered us unto himself in his holy sanctuary. Because we believe that he's here with us. And uh, right now he's looking at each and every one of us. And as many as are with us right now, wherever you are on the face of the globe, in the world, the Lord is looking at you right now because the Lord is everywhere. His eyes are everywhere. And in him we live, we move, and we even have our being. Hallelujah. Clap your two hands for Jesus. Yes, we continue, we continue our revival. Um, and uh, today, the sixth day we are meeting. Sixth day we are meeting. We started on the, on the 11th, and today the 19th. So it's eight days now, but the sixth time we are meeting. And we're looking at the fact that uh, the blood of Jesus purges us in order that we might be able to serve the living God. So, purging our conscience, the theme is purging or cleansing our conscience to serve the living God purging or cleansing our souls, our conscience, so that we'll be able to serve the living God. And we've come very far. Today we're looking at a title uh, of coming, sorry, confidence to come to God. We're looking at confidence, having the confidence to come to God. Confidence to come to God. Confidence to come to God. And the text is taken from the book of Hebrews again. Hebrews chapter 10, 19 to 25. Confidence to come to God. And the text is Hebrews 10, 19 to 25. If you there say amen. Hebrews 10, beginning from verse 19. I'm reading from the NIV, the New International Version of the Bible. Therefore, brothers, since, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. 
For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spare one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another and all the more as we see the day approaching. Amen. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Confidence to come to God. Beloved, having the confidence to come to God is a great thing. And my prayer is that everyone here, as many as are in our churches, and indeed as many as who hear us or see us in a day, may have the confidence, the confidence to come to the Lord our God. Because unfortunately, the majority of humankind, the majority of people in the world haven't got this confidence. Their confidence may be elsewhere, but we're talking about the living God, the most high God, the creator of the universe. How do you get to this God with confidence? Because if only you can go to him or come to him with confidence, then it means that the way is open for you to come to him. And if the way has been open to you to come to him, then whatever you come to him for, he will gladly, willingly, readily give it to you. And may God give you all that you need. Hallelujah. So having the confidence to come to God, beloved, is something that we, we all, we all must, must, must want, need, pray for, work for. Because it means that then the Lord will supply all your needs according to his riches. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says in verse 19, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. The Bible, is, but the Bible is assuming, the writer of Hebrews is assuming that by now, you and I already have that confidence. He said, therefore, my brother, since we have the confidence, it's not if or when or do you, but he said, since we already have it, we have it. Hallelujah. So that by now, by now, everyone in FCAC, everyone who has been, who, who says a Christian, or who has been watching us, listening to us, and being with us, must have that confidence. Because we need, you need that confidence. And how can we be sure? How can you be sure that you have that confidence? And the Bible leaves us in no doubt tells us how you and I must have that confidence. And there are three things that gives us that confidence. There are three things. He said, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, Three things that when they are fulfilled, then you and I must have that confidence. Number one, the Bible talks about the blood of Jesus. Since we have confidence to enter the most holy place, we know the most holy place where God is. That, that is God's presence. The most holy place where God's presence. One, by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Now, the fact is that the blood of Jesus has been shed. He shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. We know this is something that is in doubt. It's not something that is in doubt. It's not something that is being waited for. It has already happened. It's something that we have received. And we, we know that this blood is able to cleanse or purge our souls. So, so that Things, acts that lead to death 
are washed out of us. They are cleansed out of our souls. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, so if you hear with me or hearing us from anywhere today or thereafter, once you believe that the blood of Jesus has been shed for us to purge mankind, to serve as a ransom, to mediate the new covenant, once you know that then the first condition has been fulfilled. The number one condition has been fulfilled. And church, if you agree with me, say yes. yes. Say a bigger yes. yes. Clap your hand for Jesus. Then he says, uh, by a new and living way open for us through the kitchen, that is his body. By a new and living way open for us through Jesus. Now, we have been hearing that in the Old Testament days, they used to go to God by an old and unsatisfactory way. An old way, elaborate way, complicated way. That was not even satisfactory. It's not even, even able to achieve or guarantee or grant them what they needed. That was the old way. And only one man, the high priest was allowed into the presence of God and only once a year after he himself had met several requirements and if he failed to meet one then he was a dead man he was as good as dead but Christ came and we know Christ came we all know that Christ came he died and he opened a new and living way a new and living way so that now the evidence is that we don't have to go through the Old Testament way or system by which they went to the most holy place. No. So that you and I right now, we are in the sanctuary of God. We are right now in the most holy place. You didn't have to go through any ritualistic ceremonies. You didn't have to go through the washing of your clothes, burning of incense, sacrifice of sacrificing animals. You didn't have to bring any blood of booze and goats with you. And yet, yet, you are right now in the presence of God in the most holy place. Hallelujah. So definitely, this is a new and living way. The old way was a dead way. And the people were not even cleansed. But now, this, this new way is a living way. And if you agree with that, then church, say amen to that. Then clap your hands for Jesus. The Bible therefore said that, and we also have a great priest. You see, we have a great priest. Number three, the third condition, the third condition is that we have a great priest. And 21 says, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, we have a great priest over the house of God. In the old system, or in the Old Testament system, they had a high priest who was in charge of the ceremonial rituals. And he did everything. He went to God, Holy of Holies, and then came back and reported to the Israelites, the Jews. But right now, the Bible says the church, the church is the body of of Jesus. Jesus is the head of the church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that we don't even, we don't now have a high priest like the old days, in the olden days or Old Testament days, but we have a high priest who is Jesus himself. He is Jesus himself. And he is always where his children gather together. You may not see him with your naked eyes, but as many as are filled with the Holy Spirit, you can feel his presence, you can see his presence, and he always gives us evidence of his presence. In that, he has given us his spirit, the Holy Spirit, by which we cry out, Abba, Father. Shall I say, Amen. 
So we have evidence that Jesus is now the great priest. And he is over the church. He is the head of the church. So he is over the house of God. Pastors are all under shepherds. They are leaders. They are appointed to stand between God and the people. As many as are genuinely called, they stand before God and they stand for But the great high priest is Jesus himself. And when we go to Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews 4, verses 14 to 16. Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Hebrews 4, 14. Therefore, Hebrews 4, beginning from verse 14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. But we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence. Again, with confidence. So that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. The Bible is saying that now, again, we have a great high priest. And this high priest is Jesus himself. And he has passed through the heavens. You know, when, we're, when he ascended to heaven, he passed through, the three, that he passed through the three heavens. We have, you know, the first heaven, second heaven, and third heaven. You know all that. He passed through the heavens. The first heaven, second heaven, the third heaven. Third heaven is what you call, what you call heaven, where are the where the, 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 the dwelling place of God. So he has been here. He knows what is here. What is here. He's been through it. He has seen and tasted every temptation. He has seen every hardship, every difficulty, every challenge that any human being can ever go through. He has seen it all. He knows it all. Hallelujah. Now, your situation is nothing new to him. Your situation is nothing new to him. And you are not the only brother or sister in the world right now in that situation. You may not be, in fact, not may. You are certainly not the only brother or sister in that situation right now at any time T in the world. You are not the only one. There could be thousands of believers, children of God, who are in the same situation as you are. Whether they are blessings, they are others also being blessed the same way. And God wants, God wants you to see how each of you will handle that blessing. Hello? So if you handle your blessing in an ungodly manner, then God will not have any pleasure in you. Because all the others may have passed. Yes, from that blessing they have passed. But you may have failed in how you handled that blessing. Maybe you even forgot to thank God for that blessing. You forgot to thank. You took it for granted. You didn't thank him. It is a challenge. You are not the only person facing that challenge, that difficulty, that adverse situation. There are millions of others. From the ages to now, what is happening to you now has been happening to millions of, of brothers and sisters. So how you react, how you respond, Jesus knows it. And he will score you, your mask, according to your response. But may you all pass the test. May you all pass the test. Clap your two hands for Jesus. Therefore, he says that in that case, verse 16, let us then let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. 
Beloved, these things are not fantasy. They are not abstracts. They are not fiction. They are real. One day, I will share a very big testimony with you, wherever you are. Because I was believing God for something great. Something that looked impossible. Something that appeared to be elusive. Something that had been, you know, missing from some people. Though they've been pr praying, yes, they have not been getting the answer. But I got to the point that whenever I come to God in prayer, whether congregational prayer or in personal prayer or private prayer, with all these facts in mind, I had full faith, 100% faith, that I was talking to God just like I'm talking to you. In the same way as you can hear the sound of my voice, I knew that God was hearing my voice. Praise the Lord. So I was talking to my father like face to face. Though I could not see him with a naked eyes, I knew that he was with me, he was listening. And each time I prayed that prayer, I knew my prayer had been heard. And that sooner or later, in fact, very soon, I shall receive the answer. And lo and behold, I received the answer. It was a miracle. A miracle. One day, I will share that miracle with you. Praise the Lord. Confidence to come to God is what you all, we all must have. If we did not have it, have it from today. Have it from today. Approach the throne of grace with confidence. When you need mercy and when you need grace. Mercy and grace. Hallelujah. Even when you have done something wrong, when you are in the wrong and you deserve to be punished, you can still go to your father and expect him to be merciful unto you. And may God show us all mercy. Hallelujah. Then when God has forgiven you according to his tender mercies and you are purged, you go to him with confidence and then you ask for that thing by faith and then by grace he will give you that thing in the name of Jesus. That if you agree with me, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Very, very soon we are, we are going to be organizing, believing God, we are organizing uh, prayer trips to our Swedru church. The church is now being converted to a rich prayer and retreat center. Prayer and retreat. And uh, those who want to, really want to come to God in confidence, we take a trip there. We, no, no, we, come, we get out of Tema. Get out of Accra. Get out of your homes. Get out of your, your country. Your family. Your father's house. Praise the Lord. Out of your country. Your family. And then we go there. Not for one month, just for about two days. Just for two days. We may not even fast. We do not have to fast. We go in there. So when you are out of your country, out of your family, from your father's house, and all that is behind you, then the only person left before you now is God. Hallelujah. Clap your two hands for Jesus. So, the, the, the writer of Hebrews says, Therefore, brothers, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, then some things must happen. So, as a result of this confidence, there are five exhortations, five encouragement. Five points of encouragement. Five points of advice that the book of Hebrew gives to you and to me. Hallelujah. And just pay attention carefully. There are five points here. Once you have that confidence through the blood of Jesus by the new and living way and because we have a high priest, a great priest at the head of the church now. And these things are yea and amen. There's no doubt about these things. There's no question or, or argument about these things. Therefore, having got this, then there are some five things that we, you and I need to do. He says, 
Let her draw near. First thing he said, let her draw near. Hallelujah. That's verse um, 22. Let her draw near to God. Let her draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us or purge us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure, with pure blood. Faith is what we're talking about here. Faith. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, with full assurance of faith. When our hearts have been purged by the blood of Christ, Lord, when you go to God with confidence, when you approach your God with confidence, how do you go about it? Do you go to him like you're going to any human being? Because you want to go to a friend, you, you go to a, even a family member, your father or, or mother, with your request, your prayer. You may not necessarily receive it. You may say, oh, I don't have it. Your human parents, brother or sister, or even close friend, may say, I don't have it. I don't have it. And when you draw near to God by faith, by faith, then the thing that you are asking, though you don't have it, though you don't have it, it's the same as having the substance. It's like you have it already. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's like you have it already. And just I've been saying that faith Faith always has a foundation. Faith doesn't hang in a vacuum. Otherwise, you don't have faith. What God had told you from his word, the word of God, the evidence of his presence, the manifestation of his power, things that you have experienced, Give you that faith. Give you that faith. Without the word of God, without the experience of the Holy Spirit, without feeling God in your own life, you may not even have little faith. But church, may you all have great faith. May you all have great faith. Hallelujah. Clap your two hands for Jesus. When you have faith and you go to God, full assurance, as a fullness of assurance, that you know that what you are going to ask for, though you have not received it, you have it already. You have it already. And just may you have it already in your hands. If you cannot draw near to God with a sincere heart, with full assurance of faith, amen. Number two, he said, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. Hope. First one is faith, now hope. Let us hold. Let us hold, verse 23, unswervingly, unwaveringly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Why? Because he, God who has promised, is faithful. Let us hold unswerving. In other words, did you know the God the God that you say you are serving, worshiping? You must hold that hope. Hope. Because our worship of God, our service of God, is all because we are hoping for something. Some things here on earth. And after this life, even greater things. Hallelujah. We are not serving God like punching in the air. We don't talk into the air. Everything we do is based on faith and hope. So he said, if you prefer to have that faith, if you say you have that hope, the hope of things here in, in this life and the hope of heaven, if only you profess, you are saying you have it. You have, the, you have that hope. You have it. If you have it, if you generally have it, then you must hold unswervingly. You shouldn't shake. You shouldn't, you shouldn't falter. You shouldn't sway. 
You shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, linger. You must be firm and steadfast. Steadfast. In the hope that you profit that you have. That is one way that you can come to God. With confidence. If you are double-minded, double-minded, Bible says that you are like, like a wave of the sea is tossed tossed about by the, by the wind. Tossed about. When the wind is going this way, the, the wave goes. When the wind is coming, then the wind can, the wave can. Then such a, you cannot get anything from God. Unswervingly, that is steadfastly, firmly, you are not influenced by things happening around you. You are not you are not affected by things people tell you. It's not what you hear, what you see around, what you see happening to somebody. No. It's not what you see happening to somebody. You don't follow the crowd. You follow Jesus. If only you profess to have that hope. And may we all have that hope, church. So, first one was faith. This one is now hope. Hope. And these things are very, very important. Without hope, Without hope and our faith is nothing. So let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. Three. Three. Having done this, he says, let us consider how we may spur one another on to our love and good deeds. <laughs> Verse 24. And let us consider, consider, how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. So love. I said, think of how we can, not, don't be selfish. It's not selfishness. It's sacrifice, sacrificial. You know, loving your neighbor, feeling for your neighbor. I said, consider how if you are strong, you have confidence, then how do you spare each other on? To spare is to, is to move along, is to get people to move along with you. You see, you have love and you have good deeds. You have love and you have good deeds. First of all, you have to have love. You must have good deeds. If you don't have love and you don't have good deeds, then you cannot, you cannot influence anyone. Because the person looks at you and it's all hatred. It's all gossiping. It's all bad mouthing. No love. You are in the church, it's bad mouthing. Pull him down, pull her down, trample her under. You cannot spare anyone on. In other words, by your own love and by your own goodness, you spare one another on. Hallelujah. So that those who don't have love, who don't have any good who will look at you and they will feel challenged. They want to copy you. They want to emulate your example. Therefore, you cannot come to God with confidence if in the church you're bringing people down. You're destroying the brethren. You are discouraging them. You are making them feel, feel like they are wasting their time. But if you have love for God and love for the brethren, you have good deeds, then to spare is to get other one to get them move along with you. You move them. How about two hands for Jesus? You move them. You don't have to say anything by your by your very life. By your own life, you move people with you. So I said, consider it. Consider it. And sometimes, consider means that it's not something that, uh, you know, so tomorrow, we have to think, how do I do this? Let us consider how. May your brother or sister, she said, we're here sparing on power. We here in Kenya, praise the Lord. We hear fire. We hear wind. A quamber and a faso, 
So we begin to consider in what way can I do this? Hallelujah. In what way can I do this? I was in church on Sunday and on such special days, Thursday, Sunday was a communion service. When I, I put aside a lot of, I put aside some extra money. I put aside some extra money. And uh, I pray and I go to the church. The Lord will lead me to some people, somebody, not everybody, but somebody that I can give that money to. Somebody that was in need. Somebody who is lacking, give the money to. So at the other service, I, I, I had a name. But when I mentioned the name, the person was not in the church. The Bible said, you should not forsake the assembly together for yourself. Some, some are in the habit of doing. We'll come to that. So then the, the person was not in the church. So I, said, I said, oh, I brought this gift to give to this person, and he or she is not here. So I said, Lord, then who are there? God pointed somebody eyes to me, somebody else. And she was there. Praise the Lord. Now, so if I give this envelope to this sister, in fact, it will spare her because this is a sister whose sister, there are two sisters in the church. And the sister has left the church complaining, murmuring, complaining, left. So, it is possible that the, the, the sister who I left can influence this one. So I could see how the Lord pointed out to me. And I called her to my office and gave her the envelope. And she was so happy. She called this morning. Was it yesterday? Yesterday. Eh? She called to say a very big thank you to you all. Amen. Clap your two hands for Jesus. So you consider how do I spare one another on? How do we spare on one another? Very, very important. So you don't see so, so all your life here, your time here, you, you are an encouragement by your life. The things you, you encourage each other. Amen. Number four. He says, let us not give up meeting together. Let us not give up. 25. Let us not give up meeting together. As some are in the habit of doing. Number four. Let us not give up. that you started very well. You were meeting, coming for every meeting. Then as time went on, we'll come to that later on. Because of some cares of the world, some things in the world, now you begin to slow down. Your attendance was 100%. Then it came to 99. From 99, it dropped to 45%. Then from 45 to 44, 43, 42, there's only 10%. You can see that you are, you, are, you, are, you are going towards zero percent. Praise the Lord. Let us not stop meeting together. And I always say, and I will say it again, everyone hearing me, meeting together, very, very important. We have seen it from Old Testament days. In the tabernacle, in the sanctuary, no Israelite was allowed to absent himself or herself. You couldn't stay in the camp when it was the day of atonement. When all Israel gathered there, you had to be there by force. Otherwise, when they sprinkle the blood, you will not be there. And they do it only once a year. Can you imagine? Once a year. So if you miss it and it expires after one year, the efficacy of the blood, which only cleans the outside has expired. You have to go for renewal. It's like a, a road work net certificate. Praise the Lord. And if you miss it, that means that the rest of that whole year you were unclean. And God will see you. You are unclean. And you cannot go before God. You, there are some things you cannot do. So all Israel will assemble for the high priest to sprinkle the blood of, of, of the bulls and and, and goats on them. And they all had to be there. And they all be there to see the high priest come out and bring a message, blessing from the holy of holies, from the most holy place. So you couldn't miss it. 
so it is now. It is now even better. Better. This new and living way is by far better. And therefore, when you don't come, when you absent yourself without any good reason, then you can judge for yourself how you stand in the eyes of God, how God sees you. And for that reason, you cannot therefore then have the full assurance of faith to go to God. You cannot. I've told that when I was in Bible school for two years, two years, I stopped work as a doctor. When God called me for two years, I stopped work as a doctor. And every morning, I will drive out of my house, where to? To attend Bible school. Where we pray, study the Bible, analyze the Bible, you know, exams. That's all we then pray. That's what we did. And I never miss one day. All the two years, I never miss one day. Most of the students miss many days. Miss many days. Some of them will come only once a week. Once a week. They will come late and leave early. They took the whole thing as, as something okay, casual. But I never miss one day. Never, not one day. Praise the Lord. Because I knew that I had to assemble before God with the brethren. And two weeks before we graduated, after two years, the Lord said clearly in a prophetic utterance, do this, when you graduate, when you graduate, you must all wait on me for three days. Fast six to six. Three days, wait on me. And I'll tell each and every one of you the ministry that I've called you to, into. Where's your Antokwa? Is there any argument about this? We were 35 in the class. 35. When the day came, I organized the meetings. The first day, we were 13. 22 were absent. 22 didn't come. By the third day, we were down to nine. <laughs> nine. So you see how Jesus said that the disciples should not depart from Jerusalem. They should wait until they receive the Holy Ghost. 500 people, and when the day came, there were only 120 left. It had been happening. It had been happening. 120 were in the upper room when the Holy Spirit arrived. The remaining 380 were nowhere to be found. They will all have excuses. But they didn't receive the Holy Ghost. But they did not. And the nine of us, church, at, believe me, all of us received direction. We all received direction. Hallelujah. I know that before then, I had planned. My plan was that as soon as I, when I graduated from medical, from Bible school, like, it used to be the habit. I was going to stop working as a doctor. You know, there are many people who have done that. That you have missed, and they just stopped working as doctors. And they went to, they went to full-time ministry. That's what we knew. So I was going to stop working as a doctor. And go into full-time ministry. That was when the Lord said, Dr. Edwards. The Lord called me by name. He said, I made you a doctor. I made you to be a doctor. I said, yes, I am. Because when I look at there, some exams that I passed, I couldn't have passed the exams. Continue to work as a doctor. And I'll give you grace. The grace to also work as a pastor. Be my servant. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those who didn't come, not long after, they were no longer in ministry. Those who were not there, we didn't hear of them. One of them I, I heard was selling Lotto at uh, Accra New Town. He was in a Lotto kiosk. After two years in Bible school, he was selling Lotto in a kiosk. There was one of, our, one of the nine who was, was with us. I remember his name. He was good at attending uh, crusades. He was fond of attending crusades. When he hears of a uh, 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 bonky coming, he'll be there. When he hears of a uh, uh, who else? Uh, uh, Lord Titan, he'll be there. Attending big, big, big crusades. And he'll come to school. So he'll come to school after one week. Hey, I went to um, Ampia Coffee Crusade. You know? hey, then we're all envying him. Hey, this guy has been to Ampia Coffee Crusade. Hey. When he came to his turn, the Lord said, hey, 
Agri. His name was Agri. Have I sent you to any crusade? <laughs> Did I send you to attend a crusade? Have you noticed that when you go, this is what the Lord said, have you seen that when you go, they never gave you even one CD? He said, hey, so I said, I'm going now, walk out. We thought you were going, because he was good with instruments. You know, he was good with uh, well, the electrical, it's in the set, you know, fixing the instruments, technical team, mixer, it was excellent. What said, I have not sent you there. That's why when, each time you went, they didn't give you anything. Because, so stop going there. Then you know what the Lord said? The Lord said, you alone, when we finish three days, continue for another three days before I tell you what to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. So church, it's when you come together with the brethren like we are doing now. That's when things happen. Yeah, things happen to others, but if you want things really to happen to you really in the Holy of Holies, then do not forget do not refuse. Don't absent yourself from a gathering together. Whenever the church is meeting, at all costs, be here with us. Grab your hand for Jesus. So let us don't give up meeting together. The Bible says, as some are in the habit of doing, it has been happening. As some are in the habit of, it has become a habit of others. It has become a habit. Oba na, makone dia ne next week. Mepani free. Even though there was nothing, say makona me ah means I'm free. Hallelujah. Once I've been here today, ah tomorrow I'll take it free. My off day. You know what? Fellowship. Fellowship is very 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 important. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then finally, he said, let us encourage one another. Let us encourage one another. And all the more, as you see the day approaching. Encouragement means restoration. We talk, we talk about sparing one another on. Different from encouragement. Encouraging is when you see your brother or your sister weakening, backsliding. Why am I? For some reason. The person who sits next to you, you know him, you know her. He or she sits next to you. Then for two, three weeks, you don't see him, you don't see her. What do you do? Do you just come, receive your, or, for, your, for yourself and then go away? You don't care whether he or she comes? You must find out what is going on in his life or her life. And then encourage the person. If the person is backsliding, weakening, losing his or her faith, sad, depressed, going through some challenge, serious challenge, persecution, or even sick. Person is sick. It is your duty to find out. Let us encourage one another. Up to restoration. Restoration, so you restore that person. Don't just come and look at me, listen to me, dance, sing, you know, and then go away fulfilled. But what about what about your neighbor? You must love your neighbor as yourself. And you restore and call that person to restoration. So you restore the person back. You restore the person back. If it's something that is missing the person's life, let the church know. Let us know. Oh, this brother who sits next to me, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm told he's very sick, very ill. We will call and go and visit, pray for him or for her. Then, then the person will feel encouraged. When he or she has come, been restored, come amongst us, he or she will feel very encouraged. No, no, the church loves him. The church loves her. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Especially as you see the day approaching. Church, every day that passes by takes us one day closer. Every day that passes by that you spend, that you chop, takes you one day closer to the day of judgment. Even if you do not live to see that day, 
It's still the same. It's still the same. Because, see, Bible said that it is appointed, destined unto man to die once. And then, after that, judgment. So, you know, from the time that you fall asleep, or I fall asleep, so the judgment day is as if it's only one second. Praise the Lord. There's nothing in between again. So those who went to sleep two, three thousand years ago, no, it's not three thousand years to them. Time, there, there's no calendar, there's no time. It is not three thousand years. It's as if they just close their eyes, they blink, open their eyes, and it's judgment day. So, indeed, in fact, if you want to look at it, every day that you spend in this life brings you closer, one day closer, to the judgment day. And as you, did, you see the day approaching, that's why you should feel concerned. Be concerned. Be concerned for your neighbor. For that brother or sister who sits next to you. For that person in your department. Feel concerned for that person. Hallelujah. As you see the day, unless you are not thinking of the day. Unless you are not thinking of any day. And as a Christian, you must think of that day. It's approaching. Early in my ministry, I was doing deliverance. And uh, I was casting out this demon. The demon was talking about uh, that day. That day, the home tree and you. Demon said that day, how they will suffer on that. So I said, what day? It couldn't even mention the day. What day are you talking about? I knew it. I was talking about judgment. He said, that day. We all, we all know that day. That day is coming. The demon said, we know that day is coming. And we are terrified. We are terrified of that day. I said, what day? He said, I cannot mention it because the mention of that day, the thought of that day is so terrifying, so horrible to Satan's kingdom. They don't want to mention it. They don't want to mention it. So I said, what day? He said, I mean, to me, come. What day? I will say it. But you know that day. He said, you know that I'm talking about. That day is coming. I knew it. But they could not just open their mouth to say it. So as you see the day, that day approaching, encourage one another. Encourage one another. Then when you have done all these things, it is evidence that now you can approach the throne of God boldness, confidence, knowing that you will obtain mercy and find grace to help whenever you are in need of anything. Hallelujah. Clap your two hands for Jesus. Are you with me, church? So, coming to God, confidence, confidence to come to God. That's what we are talking about. And you can only do this when you have your conscience purged. You've allowed your conscience to be purged by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. And it is real. All these points, real. I, 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 I'm a, my wife, I started preparing. I sat down. When was it? Was it last night? Last night. And I said, I won't go to sleep. I, I want to get all the material for up to Sunday. The, the, the God started giving me the ideas on, on uh, on Sunday, but I sat down yesterday in church. <laughs> it was wonderful. Wonderful. By, by, I sat down about, about 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. I did not finish until 2 a.m. Five hours. Five hours. And by 1 o'clock, I was exhausted. You know, when we keep receiving, 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 and each, each time you have to close your eyes, and then, then the idea will come, then you write it down. The scripture will come, then you go and refer. Holy Ghost, it's very exhausting. Very, very tiring. And by one o'clock, I was so exhausted. I said, Lord, give me strength. And when I finish at 2 a.m., then when you go and lie down, then you know, you know, you, know, you can't sleep with the anointing. When the anointing is there, you cannot sleep. You lie down, your eyes are wide open like Mr. Bean's eyes, you know, like this. Eyes were wide open. I don't know when I fell asleep. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Church, coming to God with confidence or confidence to come to God. 
And what you have heard tonight, let it stay with you and impart it unto others. In Jesus' name, amen.